Welcome back. We're here with someone really special. We've got a friend of ours coming in and they're going to talk about voices for children. And so you are who? Tanya Rubel Richter. And I'm the director of Southeastern Indiana Voices for Children. Awesome. And I know you're everywhere in the county. You're you're with all <laughs> you're doing all kinds of things. How many volunteers do y'all have so far? We have almost 80 volunteers now. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Now the big question that I get from everybody is what is Voices for Children? What what exactly do you all do? I know. I think it everyone has a different idea about what we do. And I one time I was in um, a local music store here downtown and the guy asked me if we did singing lessons for kids. <laughs> So that is not, that is not what we do. Um, we are advocates for abused kids in the system. So um, we're the local CASA program and CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. So we are an agency of 501c3, a nonprofit that recruits, trains, and supports CASA volunteers to advocate for kids who are in the system because they've been abused. Now, the, a lot of times people think that um, all the cases are severe mm -hmm. and they're a little hesitant about volunteering, but that's that's not the case. They can actually come in and request certain criteria in order to take a child, can't they? Absolutely. We have, we're currently serving about 200 children and we do cover Jefferson and Ripley County mm -hmm. and we have um, approximately 60 kids on our wait list right now. So it's significantly lower than we were a year ago. A year ago this time we had 242 kids on our wait list. Oh wow. Yeah, so with, with those numbers, I mean, there's all kinds of cases. We have, I mean, the, the full spectrum. We have drug exposed babies are sometimes the easiest cases to serve on. And that sounds like it wouldn't be, but it is because um, sometimes the parents have slipped up and, and done those things and then they get it together when the baby gets here. So sometimes cases like that are a little easier, you know, to love on babies that right. are sick and, and you see them pull through, you see the parents pull, pull through. So um, those are some of the easier ones sometimes. Right. And then if, if they can handle more, well, that's great. And some people can. Some people can be detached from a mm -hmm. situation and others are just all heart. And, mm -hmm. But I think so. I think CASAs are, I mean, the greatest group of people. We have, um, I mean, the full spectrum. You know, we have all ages. You have to be 21 to be a CASA. We have, I mean, from 21, I think our oldest CASA was like 87. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, she recently retired from us. But um, <laughs> so we, I mean, the full spectrum. We have people who are, you know, stay-at-home moms. We have businessmen. We have, I mean, literally every every gender, every age, every professionalism. I mean, or every, I'm sorry, professional lane. It's it's just really cool. They're all different and everyone has a different skill set and they bring right. different things to the table. So um, the one thing they all have in common is empathy. You know, you have to be able to um, just dig in and, and when things are ugly for these kids, you know, you're the one that's the same for them all the time. So right. it's really cool. You're the stability. Yeah, you are. And, you know, in this system at all, I mean, in the social, the social services side, there is so much turnover. So the kids that we work with, they might have in the life of their case, they might have, you know, five or six different people from DCS, right. five or six different therapists, different foster homes, which means different teachers, different doctors. Sometimes the only person that stays the same is the CASA. So it's, we aren't just investigating, we investigate the case, we report back to the judge what we think is in the child's best interest. Um, we talk to everyone in that child's life. But not just that, we are the same person for them. We are the right. one, you know, that's in their corner and tells them that they're worthy and that, you know, we care about them. We care how they do on their tests. I mean, just little things like that. So it's really cool. Now, how much time do they spend approximately with the kids? Um, every case is totally different. And right. I know that sounds crazy, but so the national oh, average, the, the stats are showing that on average, it's about 10 hours a month. Um, and we have, like, if, if cases, if there aren't a lot of things going on in the case, then it might be 10 hours a month, sometimes even less. Like, if we have a child who maybe termination of parental rights has already happened and we are waiting till adoption and the kid is thriving um, and we are just thrilled with the placement, you know, then that doesn't take as much time. That's just checking in and making sure everything's okay. But then we have cases where, you know, maybe there's a lot going on and there's a lot we have to fight for for the kids and, you know, the parents might really be struggling or maybe the placements keep disrupting. I mean, yes. there's a lot more in that. So um, it, it certainly can be more than that. But I think safely you can say that you can spend about 10 hours a month. And it's not scheduled. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. have a every Tuesday at five or right. something like that. Right. So. Which is why, I mean, a lot of our CASAs work full time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that it is the only things that are done on schedule time are the child and family team meetings with DCS and all the providers and then the other thing are the court hearings. 
So um, other than that, everything is on the CASA's time. So they can do calls, emails, visits, all of those things on their own schedule. That makes it a lot easier for them to be involved. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. So it sounds like maybe they should just volunteer. And oh my gosh, yes. We, <laughs> we would love to have more volunteers. We have our next training is coming up um, in June. It's going to be actually during the week. Usually we do them on the weekends. But in the summer months, it's hard to get people to commit on the weekend. Yes. So um, it's going to be like a Thursday, Friday, two weeks in a row in June. I'm starting June 6th. So. June the 6th. Mm -hmm. So there'll be two, it's two weeks? Um, it's just, yes, two weekends. So it's like Thursday, Friday, two weeks in a row. And we follow the National CASA um, right. curriculum. So it's 30 hours of training. So we do courtroom observations. I mean, they have to go in and watch some of these hearings take place. And um, with Judge Moat here in Jefferson County, and it's Judge King in Ripley County. So they have to observe that. And then we do an experts night where we have people who work in the field come in and talk to them. So it's it's really cool. And of course, I'm biased, but there's a lot of really, really interesting information. I mean, so it's not like 30 hours of sitting there in a really dry lecture or something right. like that. It's not like that at all. We we give our classes all the tools that they need to be able to stand in and, and fight for these kids. So, I mean, we teach on the Indiana law, um, social services, interviewing, um, just child visits. I mean, you name it. Well, that, that makes it a lot easier on them because then they're prepared for what they're going to be facing. Right. It's not like they're going to walk in and yeah. be caught off guard. Yeah, so. and, I, and I think you hit the nail on the head before, too. I think you said that sometimes people are intimidated or afraid to kind of jump in. And, yes. And I get that. I think I was, too, before I became, I was a CASA volunteer years ago, and I think that um, once you see it, like, I really think if you talk to someone who's a CASA or if you talk to someone who works at Voices for Children, um, or someone who's been a CASA in the past, it changes everything. I mean, when you yeah. see like the change, we literally every single day are changing kids' lives and it's the coolest thing to be a part of. So, you know, people say to me all the time and almost every day someone asks me, how can you do that? How can you do that kind of work? You know, it seems so tough, but I really think the longer I do this, I've been doing it about 10 years now and that it's like, I get to do this. You know, I get to be the one that teaches people, right? We recruit people and teach people to fight for these kids in these horrible times. And I just, I'm fortunate, I think, to do that. I love it. We have the best team. I, I think you are. I think anytime you can make a difference mm -hmm. in their life, I mean, yeah. just one, yeah. you've affected generations yes. after that. Yes. So. We talk about that a lot. I think that's such a big deal, too, that people don't understand, I think, until you've been in the trenches on this. Sometimes it's hard to understand the full gravity of these kids' situations yes. and how it affects the community as a whole. I mean, oh. oh, my gosh. I mean, our community is, again, I mean, Madison has a, and, and um, Jefferson and Ripley County both have so many wonderful things about the community, of course. But um, the, the underbelly part is we, of course, we have to focus on that too and provide attention to that and provide support for that because these kids and what they're going through, they're our future. Yes. So they, I mean, it affects everything. They're our future mayors. And yes. City councilmen. Yes. Business or, owners. Yes, or the people in our jails. Exactly. Or, I mean, it, it's, it, th that literally is the difference. You know, are we going to help these kids come out of the ruts that they're in and the yes. families that they're in? And, you know, it affects our schools and our medical professionals, our, our mental health services. I mean, the jails, the police, I mean, our, our workforce, our big right. businesses, small businesses. I mean, it literally affects everything. Yes, and, and the more we can have a positive effect on the brighter our future is yes, for us. That's exactly it. I mean, and I, I have, I've been doing this long enough in this area that I've seen some kids grow up that I used to work with um, as a CASA or when I was working in mental health here. And the ones who got the help they needed, I see them thrive. I mean, there's a kiddo yes. who is, I mean, she is just doing amazing. She spoke at our state conference a couple months ago at the state house and um, she's just thriving. I mean, she's working full time, supporting herself. She's the pillar in her family now. Um, and then we see the opposite side, you know, where I have a kiddo who I worked with for years and um, he fell through the cracks and he did not get the help that he needed despite us trying repeatedly to do it. And he's in prison now, you know, for dealing math. He was 17 when he was arrested and he now is um, 20. And it's like, this stuff doesn't go away. If no. we don't address it and we don't help them, it's not like all of a sudden it just pulls together. I mean, more often than not, um, it absolutely not just affects their lives negatively, but it affects the people in the community too. Right. Any anybody that has anything around that child, if yes. they're if they're not making it, then yeah. they're affecting everybody around them. So. Yes. And this guy, I mean, this this one I'm talking about, he, you know, he grew up in a tough situation, didn't have parental support at all, um, was all over the place. I mean, major truancy issues, major drug issues, mental health issues, that were never addressed, and. 
um, his dad introduced him to meth and he put the needle on his arm for the first time. Um, that happens. I mean, it happened. It, that's Madison. It happens all the time. It's everywhere. Not just, yes, everywhere. Yeah. It's and that's a kid. No, it's certainly not just yeah. Madison. But I mean, that's here in our own little yes. Mayberry town, you yeah. know, this beautiful historic town that we know, have adults yes. that do that to children. Yes, right here. And so if we're not advocates for that child, yeah, somebody's going to. Who is, right? If not us, who? Yeah. I mean, so I, I again, I'm, I, I literally feel like I'm surrounded by the best people on the planet. We have, we have nine staff now. Um, we have, and in 2015 we had one. It was just me. Yes. So we now have nine staff, and we've gotten large federal grants. We've done local fundraisers. I mean, we are doing everything we can to be able to support more staff so that we can have more volunteers right. and then serve more kids. So. Um, we're we're bigger than we've ever been, but we have a lot a lot to do still. Oh, I think so. You know, my my thing is somebody asked me how many mentors I wanted in schools, <laughs> and I said how many kids are there? Yeah. And they said, well, no. I said, yeah. I'd like to see a, a somebody mentor every child yes. in their school. Yes. And then that way they have that comfort zone. Yes. Because they're not going to ask their mom and dad or their teacher certain questions, but they'll ask that mentor. Absolutely. And then you're like, oh my goodness. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. It's like, how do you choose which child would need that and which one wouldn't? Or yeah, which I, one deserves that? I think they all need one? it. They I really do. do because Every child deserves that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have grandparents, my grandchildren come to me and ask me things that <laughs> mom and dad don't know about. <laughs> but some kids don't have a grandparent or an aunt mm -hmm. or a cousin, somebody they can go to and talk to. But you put a mentor in there mm -hmm. or a CASA worker, mm -hmm. then you've got that media, medium person that they can go to and they're not going to tell mom and dad or the school, unless it's something that's going to hurt them. Right. But right. Then they have to report that. But, right. you know, just regular conversation. They don't have people. I agree. I totally so. agree. I mean, there's that saying that says that the, about the difference that one person can make in a child's life. And that's, I mean, I, I absolutely believe that. I've seen it. I've yes. seen it over and over. Yes. I, I think it's so important. So, well, now tell us where your office is so we make sure they can find yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. So in, we have two offices now. Um, since last year, we opened our office in Batesville too. So in Batesville, we're in the Ron Weber building and that is on um, Park Avenue in downtown Batesville. And here in Madison, we just moved actually a year. We've been in our building a year now. So we were on Main Street for a long time, and now we are on the corner of Broadway and 2nd. So um, it's an amazing building. We're right next to uh, Madison Presbyterian Church. There are landlords. So um, it's it's an amazing spot. And when we moved into it a year ago, we thought, oh, this is plenty of space for us. We'll grow into it. And we're already full. We're absolutely already full. So they filled it pretty quick, just so you know. Yes, we did. And it's so cool, though, I promise, like to walk in. And again, the, the topic of what we do is so ugly, right? We wish we didn't. We weren't needed. Yeah. Um, but it is so cool at any time to come into our office and see all the volunteers in and out, all the staff. I mean, every single thing that we do is about helping kids who have been abused it is the coolest thing like every single thing that we do is about that it's right. it's awesome and I think it's a great thing that y'all are doing it and I, and I hope you always enjoy doing it and you don't go anywhere yeah <laughs> Thank you. you just stay right here. <laughs> yes, so. thank you. It's we have. I mean, in looking at numbers and stats, I mean, we have approximately twenty five thousand volunteer hours a year. I mean, Whoa. that's a lot. Yes, it's a whole lot. And I think, I mean, it's just the model of Casa. I mean, it is. You have to have for every thirty volunteers, you have to have one full time staff person to manage them. So, we've gotten to the place where you know we're big enough to to serve more kids and. I mean, that's when we really look at the numbers, that's huge. Like 25,000 hours, yes. volunteer hours. Yes. Like that's what our community members are doing. That's what they're stepping up and saying, you know what? I care about this child. Yeah, it's not easy. It certainly isn't easy. I mean, it's sad, but um, we know that they need our help. Right. And it's just a really, really, really cool thing to be a part of. Oh, I think, I think you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Now, tell them what your phone number is. Yes. So make sure they got Yes. Got the contact and so, the website. Okay, our Madison phone number is 274-0877. And our website is voicesforchildren.net. And our Facebook is kind of tricky to find, and it's SEI, Voices for Children. So it's Southeastern Indiana, um, Voices for Children. And I don't know how to do Twitter, but it we have a Twitter too. And I think it's the same. It's attached to our Facebook, so it automatically updates it. I don't know. I'm not a tech person, but um, so we do have that too. Um, but you can always, I mean, you can come to our office, either of our offices. Um, you can email me. I mean, anytime if you have questions, my email address is Tanya, T-O-N-Y-A, at voicesforchildren.net. 
Um, and we, again, if we, a lot of people, almost everyone that is a CASA has said that they thought about it for a long time before they did it. So right. it's something you need to sit on and see, you know, if it makes sense for you and for your life and it's something that you want to do, but we are happy to answer any questions at all. Right. That, that, that is, you know, and if they just come in and maybe shadow somebody for a yes. while, they, I don't know if they realize that they can, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. You can come in and shadow somebody or, mm -hmm. or partner with them and do it. So it makes a big difference. It does. And I, then, seeing it in action, I think is, it's a yes, game changer. It is. Is. Mm -hmm. This think. this kind of work is is life changing. I mean, it, it changes who you are. It does, and and I think just seeing it, witnessing it, it makes it a little less scary. I think. Yeah, and I think once they find out the rules and the mm -hmm. the support that they get, yes. it's not as scary. But mm -hmm. you, you have to, you have to go ask. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's such a great point. I think that's that we've been doing a lot of surveying like our current volunteers and our staff, and that's one thing that they that our staff and volunteers are saying over and over now is the support that you know we have such an amazing team we're a very cohesive team and um, if a volunteer all of our volunteers have a volunteer coordinator that they report to so that person staffs cases with them gives them direction tells them resources or they might just be the person that sits there if they need to vent you know and come in and cry or laugh or talk about the case um, then we also have a program manager who is over all of them and then there's me i mean so we have so many people someone is available all the time to support our volunteers that's awesome i just um hoping that we encourage people to go and visit you and at least ask questions yes and then take that next step me too me too and, so, and the, if if not even that if, if everyone can do something right yes. so if someone doesn't want to be a casa then i mean they can support us financially um all that information's on our website too um and, and if not that then spread the word because yes. everyone knows someone who might be a good casa. right they can share your facebook page yeah. and yes just something yes come it to our events Yes. And now, do you have any events coming up? Um, our, we, we decided to streamline. So this year we did one event in Madison and one event in Batesville. So we just, our event here just passed recently, yes. um, Make Art with the Pieces. And it is, um, it was super successful. We had community members come in and paint furniture. Um, we partnered with Muddy Fork Antiques and it was, it was really cool. It's the second year we've done that. Oh. Um, and then we have our um, When Life Gives You Lemons. Um, our big dinner auction is in Batesville and that'll be on November 12th. So there's another event November the 12th. So mm -hmm. we've got time to plan for that one. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. So, was well, there anything else we need to tell everybody before we go? I don't. Have we kind of covered everything? I think so. I think, yeah. I mean, the main thing, again, is just educating the community on what we do, why there's a need for it, yes. how people can help. Um, I mean, we get a lot, you know, the Children's Advocacy Center is here, of course, and they do amazing work, too. They do forensic interviewing of, of children. But yes. people often get the two of us confused, and we couldn't be more different. So... Um, they, we had recently a large business actually make a donation to us that they do every year. And when we called them this year for the donation, they said, we already gave to you. And it was the Children's Advocacy Center, but they thought it was us. So I think just educating people on what we do and, and why we need help and what our role is, I think is, is really important. Well, that's our plan. Yeah. So we're going to, Miss Tanya is going to be here once a month. <laughs> And we're going to yes. talk about Voices for Children and the things that are going on and the new new things they're putting in or whatever whatever she wants to talk about. So <laughs> Awesome. We're excited to be here. Well, I'm, I'm excited. We've been trying to do this for a while. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. We finally got it done. So. Yes. Well, yes. thanks so much for being with us, Thank Tanya. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I think it's great. But you guys, you need to make it out. At least call her, share the Facebook page, Twitter. Do you have Instagram? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's beyond my scope. <laughs> nah, it won't be. We'll take care of her. So, and as for you all, thank you for watching.